Hi there, Biology 242 students. This is your instructor, Professor Howard, and I'm going to be talking to you about the anatomy of the heart today. So for the next few lab videos, my goal is going to be to sort of chop the lab material up into little shorter segments so that you have bite-sized videos available to you to study from. Okay, so let's begin. So here we have the anterior view of the heart. Um, and actually, let's go back to one of these images here because I just want to remind you about the location of the heart in general. So let's start with this one, and then we'll add layers as we go. So the heart sits in the thoracic cavity above the diaphragm inside of the rib cage, and it sits just below the sternum, a little bit to the left. So there's two regions of the heart which are labeled and indicated here, and these are the apex which is the pointiest part of the heart. So typically we think of apex as meaning the top, but in this case apex is the pointiest portion. It points down and to the left in the vast majority of individuals. This part here, indicated with arrows, is the base. So the base is the broad top of the heart, and in fact I would just circle all of it here. Um, so the base is a broad area that contains the atria and the uh, great vessels come off of it and this points up and to the right. So the orientation of the heart is not perfectly straight up and down and it's a little bit to the left. So zooming in a little bit and adding some more structures, we can see that the heart is not by itself in the thoracic cavity. So it sits in a space that is shaped kind of like a flower vase between the two lungs. So the thoracic cavity is divided up into the mediastinum, which is this sort of flower vase shaped space between the two pleural cavities which are the cavities that the lungs sit in. So this space equals the mediastinum. Now, why does it get a special name? Well, it doesn't only contain the heart, it also contains behind the heart the trachea, which you're seeing a little bit of here, and behind that the esophagus. Um, as well as the great vessels, which are all of these large blood tubes coming and going from the heart. They're not part of the heart proper, but they are in the mediastinum. Okay, so let's return to our investigation of the heart itself. So here we have an anterior view of a heart, and in this case, uh, there's been some layers taken away. So the layers are the layers of the pericardium. So the pericardium is a sac that surrounds and protects the heart. And I'm going to use some pretty bold, thick colors here to show you the difference. So lining the surface of the heart itself is a layer... Well, that's a little bit too thick, actually. Lining the surface of the heart itself is this layer called the epicardium. So I'm just going to draw it on to this heart as a bright green line. But if you see a layer lining the surface of the heart, just know that that's the epicardium. Another name for the epicardium is the visceral pericardium. Visceral pericardium means the part of the pericardium that lines the viscera itself, in this case the heart. Now in a different shade of green here, I'm going to have this layer flip over. and form a little bag around the heart. So this is going to be the parietal pericardium. And the parietal pericardium has an outer layer. Oopsie. And this outer layer is fibrous. So the inner two layers, the visceral and parietal pericardium, we call the serous layers because they are a serous membrane. The outer is made of dense irregular connective tissue, so that is a fibrous membrane. So let's call this the fibrous pericardium. And then this green guy is the parietal pericardium, 
and the bright green guy is the epicardium. AKA the visceral. So that's how that works. Now, I went on and on about the mediastinum and how it's this space in the thorax that contains things that aren't the heart. Why did I do that? Well, there's a space in between the visceral and parietal pericardium that is filled with serous fluid. So I'm going to draw that as being just like a nice blue line here. So this is serous fluid. And serous fluid serves to lubricate the heart because your heart's always beating, right? It's in constant motion, which means that it needs to be lubricated or it would experience undue friction. So both the epicardium and the parietal pericardium are serous membranes. So they are a layer of squamous endothelium, or excuse me, mesothelium, um, squamous mesothelium, which basically just looks like squamous epithelium, overlying a layer of loose connective tissue. So because they are serous membranes, they produce serous fluids, and that fluid is in this space. And the name for that space is the pericardial cavity. So the pericardial cavity and the mediastinum are not the same thing. The pericardial cavity is the fluid-filled space between the parietal and visceral pericardium and the mediastinum is the larger space that all of that stuff sits inside of. So that's a big distinction to make, and it's also a really important one. Okay, so on to the superficial structures of the heart. Let's label some. So there are two grooves on the outer surface of the heart, and one of them goes like this, which is what this arrow is trying to point at, and the other one goes all the way around the heart, encircling the base, basically. So the first one that I've outlined vertically, this is the interventricular sulcus. So the interventricular sulcus, uh, sulcus means groove. So this is just a groove that divides the left and right halves of the heart. Over here, we have the coronary sulcus. which divides the ventricles of the heart, which are these bottom muscular areas, from the atria, which are at the top. So it basically encircles the base of the heart. Speaking of chambers, as viewed from the outside, here we have the left ventricle, and here we have the right ventricle. So the chambers will look a little bit more chambery when we get to the uh, dissection anatomy of the heart, but for now, just be aware that you're seeing the outside, but inside these are hollow and they're gonna be filling and emptying with blood as the heart does its work. This is the right atrium, and this guy is the left atrium. Now you may notice that there's these littler lines that are pointing to just this little flap of the atrium and then just this little flap of the left atrium. These guys are called auricles. So the right and left auricles, respectively. So students often ask me, how am I supposed to tell the difference between the right auricle and the right atrium, or the left auricle and the left atrium? Here's how. Um, auricle means little ear. So these are little flaps, little flattened ear-like pouches off of the major chamber, which is the atrium. And these allow the atrium to expand additionally if atrial filling is especially robust. So basically they're an extra part of the atrium that can expand more and fill with more blood if necessary. So surface features of the heart. Now let's move on to the great vessels coming out of the top. So you are also going to start to learn some of the vessels while we learn the heart. 
So this fine vessel that's going into the right atrium from the head and neck is the superior vena cava. And if you could look at the back of the heart here, you would see that the inferior vena cava also drains into the right atrium, but you just can't see it from the front. This area is where blood is going up from the left ventricle, so this is called the ascending aorta. Over here, once it gets more archy and candy cane shaped, we call it the aortic arch. So this first vessel off the top is called the brachiocephalic trunk. And the brachiocephalic trunk is only visible on the right side. So the reason it's called brachiocephalic is because brachium means arm and cephalic means head. So brachiocephalic means arm head trunk. Here's a hint about trunks in arteries. Trunk implies that the artery is going to split and it's going to split into things that go to different places. So brachiocephalic trunk means arm head trunk, and that's because it immediately splits, and let's draw part of that, into the subclavian artery and then also the common carotid artery. So the subclavian artery is going to go to the arm, and the carotid artery is going to go to the head and face. So that brings me to this guy right here that I'm drawing a line to. That is going to be the subclavian artery on the left side. And then that middle guy that I don't really have room to label, but this guy right here, that is the common carotid. So it's going to also go up to the head and face. So that is the anterior anatomy of the heart, along with the great vessels. We would not be finished, however, if we didn't consider the pulmonary circulation. So this vessel right here um, receives oxygen poor blood Actually, I want a different color for that. Receives oxygen poor blood from the right ventricle. So that blood's going to go up and it's going to split and go either to the left or to the right lung via the left and right pulmonary arteries. So remember, in the pulmonary circuit, Blue are arteries and red are veins, which is reverse ease of the systemic circuit, and that's because an artery is any vessel that carries blood away from the heart, and a vein is any vessel that carries blood toward the heart. So even though this vessel is carrying oxygen-poor blood, it's carrying it away from the heart to go pick up uh, oxygen from the lungs. Okay, so let's look at the back anatomy of the heart, and then after that we'll be done for this video. All right, wonderful. So this is the posterior view of the heart. And here you can see the rest of the left atrium. And here is the right atrium. Here we can see the inferior vena cava. And here we have the aortic arch. Now, notice superior vena cava, viewer, viewable from this side as well. Now on the back of the left atrium, we have these two paired structures. So these are gonna be the pulmonary veins. And so are these. So again, although they're called veins, they are red because they're carrying oxygen-rich blood back to the heart so that the heart can redistribute that blood into the aortic distribution, which is, of course, your arterial system. So that's the reason for that. There is also a posterior interventricular sulcus. And that is likewise filled with adipose tissue and blood vessels. So we'll talk more about the coronary circulation in the next PowerPoint. So if you're curious about what these vessels are, don't worry about it yet, but you'll learn soon. I will tell you about one of them, though, and that's this big fat guy right here. This is the coronary sinus. 
So this is a widened vein that accepts venous blood from the myocardium of the entire heart and dumps all that venous blood right into the right atrium so that it can get returned to the lungs and pick up more oxygen again. So that is the front, back, and wrapping of the heart. So this is the superficial gross anatomy of the heart, and this video is complete. So in the next video, we will look at a sectional anatomy of the heart and examine the structures that you can only see from inside of the heart. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you a good evening. Bye!